Excuse me, little dog. Hi, right, guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. I mean, I'm sorry, it is now nighttime. In the collapse of global industrial civilization, we actually have the Milky Way spread out across the sky above Bugs in a Jar Farm here on Friday, I think it's August 4th, 2023. So I have all of my vacation rental lovebirds settled into their tiny houses. I have the little dogs uh, chicken and rice cooked. I cook for the dog and Sandy and Jen are wrapping up their show so I can finally get around to doing what I do every Friday as you guys know and run screaming into the night so I'm just warning you it is time for my latest ecological meltdown roundup rant where I check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com to see what is on their minds about the collapse of a planet. Wow. What is it? The Barbie movie is riveting uh, the world's attention. Wow, the world's attention is riveted on the Barbie movie. Let's see where Rhett Butler's attention is at. He is thinking about rhinos. I never saw the word Barbie mentioned anywhere in Manga Bay this week. <clears throat> Amid government inaction, Indonesia's rhinos head toward extinction. I, I honestly did not realize there were any rhinos left in Indonesia, and in a few more years there won't be. The Sumatran and Javan rhinos, arguably the world's two most endangered large mammals, are, in fact, in worse shape than widely reported, according to expert interviews in a recent report. The Sumatran rhino is down to fewer than 50 animals in the wild, and a much-touted capture program has only caught one single female, which still has not been put into a breeding program. Meanwhile, new evidence points to overcounting of the Javan rhino population, putting in doubt the health of its population. Mm, experts say the rhino's predicament is in part due to a lack of will or a willingness to take risks by the Indonesian government. Let me tell you guys where rhinos place on the uh, Indonesian government's list of priorities. Uh, they're somewhere, well, they're not nearly as high up as the Barbie movie. Uh, I think, I think rhinos are being trumped by palm oil, by coal mining, by overfishing, by cutting down every tree they can. Anyway, kiss goodbye the Sumatran and the Javan Rhino. Uh, here's this weird story. When wildlife surveillance tech watches people, conservation technologies such as camera traps, drones, and acoustic sensors are playing a greater role in protecting endangered species, preventing poaching, finding rare plants, tackling forest fires, and monitoring changes in forests and oceans. However, researchers and communities say these technologies are also increasingly playing a role in human surveillance. 
infringing on, pro on privacy, exacer exasperating, I think they meant to say exacerbating human conflicts with conservation and posing serious social and ethical implications through their use. Uh, uh, <laughs> guys, I could, uh, I I anyway, I I'm not even going to go down that rabbit hole. This is not the rant for me to go in. in, in anyway, we're going to move ahead. All right. This is the story I really wanted to talk about anyway. Uh, this, this is an article uh, about the circular economy. So guys, I don't know about you. I've had it with the goddamn circular economy. The circular economy, number one, it's still an economy. It's just one more way to tweak some, a few things so we can go on about business as usual uh, even if it wasn't a bunch of crap, ain't gonna happen. Uh, I, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the circular economy saving this planet. Okay. The circular economy is not going to save the planet for two reasons. That it still is an economy and it ain't gonna happen. So uh, let's uh, dig a little deeper into the circular economy as we circle down the drain economy. So the circular econo economy, sustainable solutions to solve planetary overshoot. The current linear production and consumption economic model, labeled by critics as take, make, waste, is taking a heavy global environmental toll. The intensive use of primary resources and overconsumption are closely linked to climate change, biodiversity loss, large-scale pollution, and land use change. Experts Experts and advocates, experts and advocates argue that a circular economy model revolving around reduced material use ain't going to happen. Reuse and recycling offers a potential route to achieving zero waste. All right, achieving zero waste, bullshit, re reversing environmental harm, bullshit, and increasing sustainability of products and supply chains. Hmm. In the absence of a firm definition of the term circular economy, Many interpretations of the circular economy exist. To be sustainable, okay, all right. <laughs> I love this. It, it, it apparently Rhett went to press with this with no trace of irony. To be sustainable, circular economy solutions should be underpinned by renewable energy sources, reduction of material extraction. Okay. So, material extraction is the underpinning of renewable energy sources. So there is, you, you cannot have an economy underpinned by renewable energy sources and the reduction of material extraction when the renewable energy is underpinned by material extraction. 
And of course, reduced consumption ain't going to happen. And the regeneration of nature. Mm. Caution is needed. Caution is needed, warn some. It's not every circular economy. I'm sorry, it's not every circular solution is sustainable. Hmm. Other experts state that to achieve its goals, the circular economy must include societal level changes ain't gonna happen and they need to go far beyond simply recycling or improving supply chains. Oh, God. Uh, okay. And then uh, I like this story following, uh, following that story. As, as long as we're we're on the, uh, the subject. Let's go down to Brazil where we're looking at Lula saving the planet. This is a commentary uh, by these people, assumingly from Brazil. Can Lula, can Lula balance the transition to renewable energy with Amazon mining expansion? Uh, the answer to the question is no, Lula or anyone else on the planet cannot balance the transition to renewable energy with Amazon mining expansion. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, I, I think the Amazon mining expansion will win. At a recent summit, Brazil's President Lula emphasized the importance of avoiding an ecological transition based on the, quote, predatory exploitation of critical minerals, warning about the dangers of concealed neocolonialism. <laughs> I, I don't exactly understand what is concealed about this. It, it, it is going to be the single biggest feeding frenzy uh, in, in the Amazon rainforest and everywhere else on the planet heading off to the moon and the asteroids. The, the, this renewable energy transition, this unadulterated horseshit is going to unleash a, an attack on this planet and certainly the Brazilian Amazon uh, that, that is going to make the, the rubber boom. Uh, look like a Sunday walk in the park. Lula knows this goddamn well. The, these neo-colonialists. Can you say China uh, are licking their chops? But at the same time that Lula is emphasizing this. At the same time, Lula's government is also promoting a green plan, a green plan to transition away from fossil fuels, which paradoxically relies on an expansion of mining like he opined against. Uh, so, this is quoting this, one of this uh, sentences from this, uh, <clears throat> from this op-ed. While it is imperative that our societies move swiftly toward ecological 
transition away from fossil fuels, yes, an ecological transition away from fossil fuels, there you go. It is just as imperative that such a transition be just and not replicate the colonial extractive logic that underlies today's climate crisis and that is exemplified by the mining industry. Uh, <laughs> the mining industry is the king of neo-colonialism. Uh, it, it is the global industrial corporatocracy uh, putting the oil and gas industry uh, in, in, in the dust, getting all of these governments in their pockets. It's uh, the, these goddamn planet eaters uh, having Lula, uh, you know, having Save the Planet Lula on their little puppet strings with what was this? His goddamn green plan. His green plan is going to turn the Amazon rainforest from green to brown, but it but the Amazon rainforest is dead anyway. And might as well go in there and mine the shit out of it. Anyway. Okay, I'm skipping over the hopium. You know, good for France uh, taking a firm stance against this, uh, this damn uh, deep sea mining. Uh, France has taken a strong position on deep sea mining by declaring correctly that this future activity should be banned in international waters. The nation has also banned it from its own national waters. Good for you. Uh, France. Okay. I have to admit, as I was listening to Sandy's show, I was eating a pig and cooking a chicken for Sancho. I, I cook for my dog. Uh, I was eating a factory farmed pig and cooking a factory farmed chicken for my dog. As uh, this in the last 15 minutes. Now we're going to go down to Ecuador. Ecuador pig and poultry farm pollution sparks protest. A new report reveals how in 2021 the Inter American Development Bank and the International Finance Corporation, the private sector arm of the World Bank, awarded multi-million dollar loans to Pronaca, one of the largest companies in Ecuador, for it to expand its pig and poultry farms. Uh, complaints over the company's environmental practices have been made for at least the last 20 years. Indigenous groups and environmental organizations claim that no prior consultation took place, that details of the expansion of the company's operations are unknown, that no requests for environmental permits have been made, and that there is no data available on the appropriate waste management methods necessary. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, God. So uh, I guess you've seen all of those pictures of those of those convicts in their underwear in those El, El Salvador prisons. Well, it sounds like five of those guys are environmental activists fighting water pollution and mining in El Salvador who were arrested in January. Yeah. I, I bet, uh, just throw them in there with the gang members. 
Uh, good luck on getting them out of an El Salvadoran prison. Okay, I remember reading a, a brief story a few weeks ago in the mainstream media about Frankenrocks, a new term for the glossary of the collapse. Plastic Frankenrocks pose new pollution threat to coastal environment. You know, these Frankenrocks, this is where humanity has officially entered the geological record of the planet. We, there, there is no more acting like that we're no longer in the Anthropocene. We are now literally contributing to the geologic record through our Frankenrocks. Plastic Franken rocks pose new pollution threat to coastal environment. Scientists are finding more evidence of a new insidious form of plastic pollution, melted plastic that has melded with rocks, coral, and other naturally occurring materials in coastal areas. Samples of these Franken rocks uh, collected in Indonesia were likely formed by the burning of plastic trash. They pose a danger to marine life because they can break down into microplastics that then enter the food chain and can also leach toxic chemicals into the environment. Scientists have called for more study, more study into this new and growing phenomenon, saying these Franken rocks require specialized cleanup management to ward off a quote serious problem. Yes, it's time to ward off the serious problem of Franken rocks. Okay, wow, this is a, a, a shocking, one more, you know, every week I say thank God for Rhett Butler and MangaBay.com. You know, people keep wondering why does Sam do this every week when nobody gives a shit, nobody listens to his rant more than 10 minutes, he is tilting at windmills, he is talking to himself, he is putting his dog to sleep with this boring, uh, this repetitive rant week after week. This is why I listen to Rhett Butler and Manga Bay, because I never would have known this. About the uh, top financiers of Amazon oil and gas projects. Take a wild guess who the banksters behind it all. Oh shit, I don't have my wallet in here. I would like to uh, I would like to have some visual aids. A new report uh, blah blah from this group you've never heard out of found that eight major banks are responsible were responsible for most of the 20 billion dollars in financing for oil and gas companies working in the Amazon. You know, we just heard uh, about how Lula uh, was, uh, you know, with his green, whatever that was, his green plan, but uh, I, I guess Lula is unaware of the $20 billion of new financing to ramp up oil and gas drilling in the Amazon. Okay, wow. The eight banks are J.P. Morgan Chase, where I have an account, Bank of America, where I have an account. 
uh, Citibank, um, Goldman Sachs, HSBC, and some of these, um, I guess, Brazilian banks. I, I refuse to believe that the, uh, what is it, the, the Asian Investment Bank or whatever it's called is not in this group. Uh, somehow the bank of these various Asian development banks uh, are, are, are hiding out uh, in, in, inside these. Um, the report recommended that banks, that the banksters behind it all make an immediate commitment to making no new financing agreements with oil and gas companies working in the Amazon, as well as ending all existing financing agreements with companies by 2025 at the latest. Yeah, they'll, they'll just move their uh, planet-eating financing that I'm helping to support by having accounts of two of the eight. Uh, and they'll just take them over to Lula's green plan to transition out of oil and gas into mining. I, I'm sure if, if you looked at the if you looked at who's financing all of this mining, maybe that's where the uh, Asian Development Bank, where you would find them if you start looking at all of these new, uh, who's financing these big green New Deal, uh, other crap attacking the Amazon rainforest. Ah, oh, God. You know, don't you love it uh, when these elephants stampede, when they go on a rampage? All right. On the island of Sumatra, oil palm farmers blame a pair of translocated, okay, we have tranny elephants for a rampage they say caused the worst damage to their oil palm crops in a decade. Yes, the two bull elephants were translocated in an effort to get them to breed with local females. I'm assuming they mean local female elephants. Uh, but instead of uh, getting out there and having a good time, they went off. <laughs> They went on a bull elephant rampage mowing down an oil palm plantation. Only 924 to 1,359 elephants are thought to remain in the wilds of Sumatra, a decline of more than half over the past decade. So the population of elephants, and I'm sure it's just like the population of the rhinos. Uh, you can start with the low end of 924, and you can believe that uh, the, the, this population of elephants has been uh, underestimated just like the population of rhinos. Oh. God, more stuff on funding circularity. Funding the... Anyway, uh, enough of this circular economy crap. All right, I guess uh, what the elephants didn't accomplish, yes, I, I'm sure this oil palm firm is quaking in his boots. Indonesian oil palm firm slapped with $61 million fine for fires on its plantations. The 
do you think so? Uh, I am quite sure they're going to collect that $61 million. All right, what do you think? I, I mean, I honestly did not know this. Um, what is the fourth largest palm oil producer in the world? Indonesia, obviously, number one. Malaysia, number two. Thailand is number three. And then we uh, jump the shark to Colombia. Colombia is now <clears throat> taking the position of the fourth largest palm producer in the world. And uh, so you will not be surprised that an investigation by the International Union for Conservation of Nature uh, analyzed six case studies relating to companies of accused of deforestation and causing socio-environmental disputes. And would you believe that experts say there is a lack of progress in Colombia's palm oil supply chain traceability. And, and, and I love this next sentence. For the one or two people on the planet still with me. A new European Parliament law requires requires companies to issue certifications that exported goods talking about palm oil in this case, that palm oil in this case does not come from deforested land. It does not come from primary forest. Or it does not come from areas of forest degradation. Would, would, would someone please explain to me and to these palm oil people, what the hell that means. If, if, if it can't come from primary forest, degraded forest, or deforested land, where the hell is this palm oil supposed to come from? Are they supposed to mine it at the bottom of the ocean? That, that is patently absurd on the face of it. Uh, Jesus, I've been hearing this story for how many years about the endless struggle to clean up Rio de Janeiro's highly polluted Guanabara Bay. Uh, once a nursery for marine life, Guanabara Bay in Rio is now dying from the dumping of thousands of, they're saying liters, but you better believe it's gallons of sewage into its waters. Uh, former fishermen now survive by picking up the garbage that floats in the bay. Wow, you will not believe this one, guys. Cameroon government again opens way for logging in Ebo Forest. Cameroon's government is again planning to open up portions of Ebo Forest to logging despite its status as a refuge for numerous endangered species including gorillas and chimpanzees. And of course, they're trying to reclassify the protected area into a forest concession. Going hand in hand, uh, as long as we're over there in Sub-Saharan Africa, let's look over there in Angola. Uh, where commercial charcoal producers have led the destruction of more than 300,000 hectares, otherwise known as 700 
50,000 acres of forest in Angola's Wambo province. Uh, you know, this charcoal production, I think, is uh, might even be the single biggest cause of deforestation in Sub-Saharan Africa. And understand that charcoal production is an example of planet nibbling. It is not planet eating. It is thousands and thousands, probably millions, of little planet nibblers who are doing nothing to uh, cause global warming are the ones cutting down just right here in one forest in Angola, 750,000 acres of, uh, of habitat in Angola literally going up in charcoal. So these, uh, you know, people who never should have been born can have charcoal to cook their bush meat. You can't blame the charcoal on the planet eaters. It is planet nibblers that these little lefties want to act like. You can't blame them. They, they, anyway, I'm not going to get off uh, on one of these little clueless moron little lefty rants. Uh... All right, good for the Norwegian State Pension Fund for excluding a major Chinese hydropower development from further investment due to its association with a dam in Indonesia that threatens the world's rarest great ape. The, uh, you know, that orangutan. Uh, the dam is being built by this subsidiary of Chinese state owned multinational power construction corporation of China, commonly known as Power China, in the only known habitat of the critically endangered. Tapanuli orangutan, a species with a total population of less than 800. Uh, good for Norway. I'm uh, sure that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is losing a lot of sleep at that. Uh, anyway... Uh, you know, the fact that there's still any gorillas or chimpanzees left in the shithole country of Nigeria uh, is uh, 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 unbelievable that uh, they have made it this far. Uh, you can kiss goodbye gorillas, chimpanzees, all the rest of them in Nigeria. And God. Uh, let's see. Here's more of this stuff on, on, on this horseshit carbon credit verification schemes. Do you believe that they are flawed? Hmm. A new assessment conducted by Rainforest Foundation UK raises fresh concerns about the validity of carbon offsetting schemes. Hmm. The campaign group claims that all, all, meaning every one of the carbon credit verification schemes have allowed millions of credits to enter the voluntary carbon market, which do not accurately represent reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. 
that this uh, 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 okay guys and, and, and Rhett is still continuing to defend this bullshit that this carbon credit is, is, is one of the single biggest bright green lies every goddamn one of them them Rhett Butler knows this damn well carbon credit offsetting it, it, it's just a pass to these planet eaters to go right on about doing it, doing what they do, which is eating a planet, trying to convince the little lefty greenies, I guess, like Rhett Butler. Uh, anyway, don't get me going on the little greeny lefties. Oh, God. You know, this new highway in Nepal threatens an endemic, critically endangered lizard, the dark sitana, a lizard endemic. But, but, anyway, they're, they're talking about this highway in Nepal threatening some goddamn lizard. Do, do you think anybody in Nepal gives a damn. I don't give a damn about the dark Sitana lizard. All right. Kiss the dark Sitana lizard goodbye. Uh, nobody gives a shit about the dark Sitana lizard. Anybody thinking some goddamn lizard is, is going to stop a new highway in Nepal Get a life. Hmm. You will not believe that in Brazil's Amazon, a new agricultural frontier threatens protected lands. Deforestation in the southern region of Amazonas state, long one of the best preserved slices of the Brazilian Amazon, is spreading rapidly as illegal gold miners, farmers, ranchers, and land grabbers advance in the region. Yes, uh, the four municipalities leading destruction in the region together accounted for nearly 60% of deforestation alerts detected in Amazonas in the first six months of the year. Do you think so? All right. We have genetically engineered trees. Genetically engineered trees stoking climate... Uh, stoking climate... Uh, uh, stoking climate... Uh, uh, and environmental fears and uh, anyway we just heard about some lizard in Nepal and here's some article about some swamp deer in Nepal kiss goodbye the lizards in Nepal kiss goodbye the swamp deer in Nepal Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because I understand I've been talking to myself for 20 minutes. Then I got to uh, follow Sancho Panza's lead. So, Sancho, what do you think about the Manga Bay rant? 41 minutes. How long have I been talking to myself? Uh, I've put the dog to sleep. I've put myself to sleep. My God.